And we're live. Awesome. We're live. Awesome. So we can get started since we're live Perfect. now. Awesome. All right. So, hi everyone. I am Ali Petrovka. I am the creator of Health and Happiness Holistic Wellness. You can find me at healthandhappiness.ca. And I am here with my friend Melissa Clark. Melissa is in her third year of her education degree. In the last two and a half years, she's lost 45 pounds, but more importantly, she's changed her relationship with food and with her body. She's constantly trying to challenge herself and strive to be a confident woman that can challenge and inspire others. Food and exercise, she tries to maintain a 90-10 paleo diet and loves high-intensity interval training to get her sweat on. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> thanks, thanks for, for having me. me. Yeah. Yes, thanks for having me. Awesome. So we will dive right in to the five myths of eating healthy on the go. Yes. yes. So myth number one, I can only eat salads and they're boring. And this is something I hear a lot from people that eating healthy out is boring. There's nothing they can eat because they feel like all they can choose from is salads. Yes. And, and, Melissa and I have a combined about 20 years of restaurant experience, even though both of us are only in our 20s. We yeah. both worked in restaurants for about 10 years serving. So we kind of know what goes on in the back end. And we really know how to customize your restaurant experience for your health because we both love our health and we both love working in restaurants. And we've figured out the tips and tricks to make it all work together. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So what are some things that people can eat in restaurants that aren't salads and aren't boring? Because I think you probably know that when we're bored with what we eat, that's when we eat our junk food. That's when we go to our chips because we're sick and tired of eating like another house salad or another chicken breast and broccoli. And we're like, yes. I just want to eat chocolate and chips yeah, and exactly. because it tastes so good. Yeah. Um, so I think something that's really good for that is is that, that lots of the time, of the time unless you have a really, you have a really strict, strict strict dietary restriction that's for you, you only need to be able to very small. Um, sorry, I keep hearing myself in my ear and it's messing me up. Um, so unless you have a really strict guideline of what you can in your diet, it's really easy to make healthy decisions when you're at a restaurant without sacrificing enjoying the food that you're eating at a restaurant. Um, so I think something that Allie mentioned in a conversation was finding restaurants that you enjoy, um, which I think is really important because it's really, like you said, if you get bored, then that's when you're not necessarily enjoying what you're eating and you're going to eat something else. Eat something else. Mm -hmm. There are not just salads that you can eat at restaurants. There are other amazing other options. options. And even changing something that's on the menu to make it a little bit more healthy or a little bit less unhealthy is something that's really important. So so. Don't always keep your eyes keep on your eyes the salad, salad portion of the menu, portion, but menu, look at the other things and things. just use your judgment on how you can make those things more healthy. More healthy. Yeah. And one tip that I stick by in my life eating healthy in restaurants is I found three restaurants in my town that I like to eat at that have healthy options. And each of those have two or three options for me. So that's about nine healthy dishes that I can go to when I'm wanting to eat healthy on the go so I'm not getting bored. Things like sushi, sticking to the, the sashimi without the rice. Um, we go out on a date night once a week to this place that has lettuce wraps with chicken and vegetables and I just get the sauce on the side. And then there's another restaurant that has really healthy bowls and you can swap out the rice for cabbage and they have chicken, they have tuna, they have red meat, whatever you want, they have really great options. So I know when someone's asking me if I want to go out for dinner, I know I have these three places to go to and be able to stick to my goals and still enjoy what I'm eating. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really important. That's really important. Definitely. So the second myth of eating healthy on the go is, is it's hard to create a healthy meal from a restaurant menu. And as servers, we know the kind of behind the scenes tips because I don't think a lot of people realize that 
servers rarely eat the food that's on the menu of a restaurant mm -hmm. because we know how to customize and we know how the food is prepared in the back. So we know how to make up new meals to fit our needs and our wants. So the first thing when you go to a restaurant is just ask the server what mm -hmm. you can do. The servers are there to help you. They want to do a good job. So if you approach the situation as a team with the server and you're being kind and you're being friendly and you're not behaving like everyone's against you, then the server is going to be more than happy to help you customize a dish to have mm -hmm. it fit what you need. Exactly. And don't be scared to ask. Like, I think lots like, of the times you go to a restaurant and you're nervous that the server is going to tell you you can't make this to a dish. But if you're friendly, like you said, and you just say, hey, like, I'm trying to avoid dairy or I don't, and, you know, my my body doesn't handle gluten very well, then the server's going to know, like you said, what happens in the back and what kind of, um, what way everything is prepared. And so they're going to help you out with that. If somebody came up to me when I'm serving and they said, here are some of the things that I need to stay away from. As a server, it's part of my job to make sure that they're getting that the best experience for us. So don't be scared to ask. Um, don't be scared to ask for substitutions or modifications to any of your dishes. Because we're all humans and we're going to help each other out, but also it's the server's job to make sure that that happens at a restaurant. Exactly. And don't lie and say you're allergic to something that you're not allergic to. I yeah. always come back to this episode of Sex in the City when Carrie tells her server that she's allergic to parsley. And after the server leaves, um, Burger's like, you're not allergic to parsley. And she's like, I know, but I hate it. And it always ends up on the plate unless I tell them I'm allergic to it, which isn't true. Like if you just tell your server like, hey, I have a sensitivity to gluten or dairy or you know what, I can't eat sun-dried tomatoes or whatever it is, they're going to respect that because like you said, it's their job. That's literally their job to make you happy. Yeah. So you don't have to lie because we know when you're lying. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of times people will say, oh, I'm allergic to gluten. And then they'll get French fries, even though I've warned them that the French fries are deep fried in the same oil as gluten, so they aren't gluten free. Yeah. And they'll still eat them. So don't lie. Just tell the truth and be honest. Everyone like, respects honesty. Yeah. yeah. And it's a, like you said, it's a partnership. You establish that relationship to say, hey, I need to make some changes, and they're going to be more than willing to. And if they're not, then at the end of the day, they're not doing our job properly. <laughs> Definitely. And lots of things can be totally customized. So if the restaurant serves a chicken breast meal that has some creamy sauce on top, that they're able to cook those chicken breasts without the creamy sauce. So you can just get a plain chicken breast if that's what you really want. Or if there's a dish that is, um, you know, like say a fajita. Some restaurants have fajitas and people go into them and think that's a really healthy option. But when you add on the guacamole, the sour cream, the tortillas, those start to add on the unhealthy calories, the refined carbs, the additives, the things that we don't want to have. So mm -hmm. you can get the fajita and instead of the tortillas, ask for a bowl of lettuce and make yourself a taco salad and skip the extra sauces. You've made your own meal off of a, something that's already on the menu without any extra effort to the kitchen or to your server. Yeah. And you're still getting something that you enjoy eating and you're still on your way to your health goals. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So things like sauces, those are really easy to just get them put on the side so you can control how much you have or get them left off altogether. Watch for things like vegetables, how they're cooked. Are they cooked in garlic butter? So that automatically turns a healthy side of broccoli into a big pile of artificial flavoring and calories that you don't need. But you mm -hmm. can ask for them to be steamed. People do that all the time at the restaurant I work at, and it's totally fine. We don't mind doing it. Or ask for your salmon to be baked instead of fried or your chicken to be baked instead of fried or something like that. Those are things that we have to do anyways when people have allergies. So we're more than comfortable doing it for people who just want a healthier option. Yeah. And in this situation, I think it's knowledge of power. So the server knows that the vegetables are cooked in garlic butter. And as a customer, 
are just opening up that conversation and saying, hey, what are your vegetables cooked in? How do you cook your salmon? What kinds of things do you, even if you order a steak at a restaurant, lots of the time they'll brush it with garlic butter or they'll brush it with something. So that's something that as servers we know that, but the customer is not always aware of that. And so I guess we kind of have a little bit of an upper hand as a server to kind of understand the ins and outs of a restaurant, but just knowledge is power. If you know the things that are happening in a restaurant, you're more you're in a better position to control the things that you're ordering and the food that you're putting into your body. Definitely. And the restaurant I work at, a lot of us, a lot of the servers and the kitchen staff are really dedicated to our health goals. I work with people who are in school to be nurses or in school to be doctors or semi-professional football players, things like that, that we do live healthy lifestyles. So you can always ask your server, what do they eat? Yeah. Because we get to customize our meals and I might get something that on the menu, it's in a sandwich and I get it as a salad or I get it in a wrap or I take off a few things and add a couple different things and it's still really delicious, but it's a lot healthier. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Right. So myth number three is I have to rely on restaurants for lunch when I'm at work. So the big, big one. thing with this is meal planning. And I honestly think everyone needs a meal plan because mm -hmm. once you have that plan in place, you're way more likely to follow it than if you just let things happen as they come up. And I really like to say, Plan your life around your goals, not your goals around your life. Mm -hmm. So if you need to change a couple of things, like start meal planning to make sure you have healthy lunches packed for work every day, then that's something you are going to have to do instead of saying, oh, I want to lose weight and be healthy, but I don't want to change anything about my life how it is now. Yeah, exactly. Set yourself up for success and ultimately you're in control of that. I think a lot of the time when you're busy or you have a lot on the go, you tend to make some excuses like, oh, I had a really big week, so I'm just going to grab lunch at work. But at the end of the day, you're saving yourself a lot of stress and a lot of um, panic um, during those lunch hours. Just set yourself up for success, make a plan, stick to it, and commit. I think, yeah, you just have to make that commitment for yourself. Definitely. And you save a lot of money by meal uh -huh. planning and not getting lunch out every single day. So one yeah. of yeah. my clients is a teacher and she says that if she doesn't meal plan, then she ends up either going to pick up a sub at a restaurant near the school or she ends up buying something in the cafeteria. And I think we all know that school food isn't the healthiest option. And it's uh -huh. also expensive. That's $15, $20. She's spending five days a week all year on food that she could be saving way more money and saving way more calories and getting way more health out of her food if she just started meal planning and bringing yeah. her food to work with her. It's a big change. I think if you go from not meal planning at all or, at all, or buying every lunch, buying every lunch, your lunch every single day, every single it's a big day. change to make. But once you make that change, make that change you never go back you because go you realize back. how efficient it is and how much time and money you're saving yourself. You're saving yourself. Definitely. And if you look at your life and look at the things that are happening that set you up to make choices that don't support your goals, you can change those. So if you work in an office and every Friday, all your coworkers go out for lunch at a restaurant that is known for it's like deep fried onions or something not healthy, then earlier in the week, make plans with someone to go to a healthier restaurant or maybe you bring in a healthy lunch for everyone to share so you can start setting things up to support your goals and in the end you're really helping everyone because you're encouraging them to live a healthier lifestyle as well yeah exactly and if your coworker or your boss or anyone keeps a lot of snack food around, which drives me crazy at work when people like bring in a big tray of cookies and I'm like, I'm trying to eat healthy, like get it yeah. away from me. You can bring in healthy snacks for yourself or start bringing in healthy snacks for your team to support everyone on that path and to keep your way from temptation. Because in the end, you're the only person who can decide what you eat. 
Yeah. And you're the only person who can make a healthy choice or not make a healthy choice. And you have the power to tell people, you know, I love going out for our weekly cocktails and apps, but that isn't supporting the lifestyle that I'm on. So can we do something instead? Or, you know, I'm going to have to sit out. Maybe you only yeah. go once a week yeah. or once a month. Yeah. 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 And I think for people who maybe don't work um, office hours, like we were talking about, we're talking about if you, if you work in a restaurant, you're not necessarily, you're not gonna, necessarily be eating gonna be eating during meal times when everybody else is eating. You're gonna be eating, eating after everybody's eating their supper. So it might be seven or eight o'clock at night and you're at work still, you maybe you weren't planning on being at work. Always have something in your bag, like have a healthy snack, some nuts and seeds, or a Lara bar or some kind of or type of granola bar, whatever whatever snack foods you tend to go for. Keep that keep always in your bag. You never know when you're gonna be at late or if you have unexpected hours, you never know when you're going to be staying at work late so you never want to be put in a position where you truly don't have any other option and everybody does obviously everybody's going to make decisions that aren't supporting their goals all the time but if you can avoid that as much as you can and that's really helpful yeah like you say 90 10 like support your goals 90 percent of the time and 10 percent of the time have something else and yeah. for snacks i like to have a snack that is as close to satisfying my craving as i can get so I'm a mm -hmm. chip fan and the restaurant I work in, we have like chicken fingers and French fries and potato chips and all this delicious, crunchy, salty food. And that's my vice. Like I could walk past a chocolate bar, but I cannot pass up chips. So I love to have oven roasted chickpeas with Himalaya salt. So they're crunchy, they're salty, but they're mm -hmm. roasted. They're not, um, they're not fried and they give you the protein. So they still give you the flavor and they satisfy your craving, but they don't give you all the unhealthy parts as well. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And for people who work in different professions, like one of my friends is a nurse and she works nights. And instead of chugging coffee to keep her awake all night or snacking on sugary foods, one of her coworkers brought a juicer in and they hmm. found that juicing kept them up way easier and didn't give them that spike and that crash that coffee gives them. And it's way healthier. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. And even your coworkers or the people that you're working around are really going to appreciate me. At first they might think you're a little bit weird, but, but after that, once they realize that you're trying to help them and support them in their health goals, it's going to be a much healthier atmosphere when you're at work as well, which is an interesting consequence of doing something like that but, like that, but everyone's, everyone's benefiting definitely and maybe you can even start some sort of health club at work or yeah. you can talk to your boss lots of companies have a wellness budget yeah. for things yeah. for their employees to do and to take care of themselves yeah exactly yeah. exactly so myth number four is yes. it's easier to pick up food than to make it at home Yes. So this is the second part of the game plan for healthy eating. Half of it's meal planning, but the other half is meal prep. Yes. Yes. Um, meal prep is something that I have, I stuck, have to stuck to for quite a long time. Long and time. like and I said, once you go, you never go back you because go back. you realize how much time and how much money you're saving. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think it's a little crazy to spend uh, the majority of your Sunday or most of your Sunday grocery shopping and prepping your food for the week. But when you go home at the end of the day, when it, whether it's five or six o'clock at night and you're tired and you've had a long day, it's so it's easy to so take easy something to out of your fridge, throw it on a plate, warm it up, and eat it, rather than come home at five or something at five, not know what to eat, what and, to eat. and while you're driving home, you say, well, I don't feel like making supper tonight, so I'm just going to stop and grab something in the drive through Yeah, and that's one trap that I keep falling into is that for some reason I forget that when I work over lunch that I'm hungry around 2 o'clock, so instead yeah. of... Yeah either having something waiting for me in the fridge or bringing food with me, I end up eating like chicken fingers or something like that. And since meal planning and meal prepping, knowing that that food is in the fridge and all I have to do is heat it up and it's ready to go, it literally takes no more time to stop at a fast food place and pick up a burger and fries on the way home. But it saves me money, it saves me time, it saves me unnecessary, unhealthy food. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And we also were talking about how, how 
even if you do have to go through a drive through or you do have to find yourself heading through, I don't know, like Tim Hortons or somewhere, there's always that information available for you. We were talking about it's actually, um, it's part of the law that they need to show that information somewhere. So if you're looking at online on their website, it'll have to show the nutrition and allergen information. So if you do need to make a healthier choice, that information is there for you to make that healthier choice, I guess. I guess. Yeah, so that's our fifth myth, is there's nothing healthy to eat in the drive through And while it does look like most fast food places rely on like their burgers and french fries, and there's information out there about how even the salads aren't healthy and things like that, it is the law in many provinces and states. And then if it's not the law, it's like a guideline of a lot of companies that their nutrition information has to be either right on the menu Mm -hmm. or everyone has to have it available. So if you go into a restaurant, you can ask your server to check how many calories are in something or what ingredients are in something. Mm -hmm. And I know in some fast food restaurants, it has to be on their website. Some of them have it up on the wall if you're going in. All that information is there for you to help you make a healthier decision. Yes, exactly. And one thing to watch for when you're looking at those calorie counts is watch for the portion size. So the calorie count might be for three chicken fingers, but they don't only sell three chicken fingers. They sell six or 12. So watch that and maybe you only have half a portion or you Mm -hmm. share it with someone or instead of getting the fries with it, you decide to get like a cup of yogurt or something instead so you still get a little bit of what you want but you're not adding on all the extra calories yeah exactly and watch for sauces too obviously if you go to a restaurant and you check out the nutrition and allergen guide some of those side ramekins of sauce like even if it's one or three ounces you're maybe adding an extra 150 to 200 calories with the side whether it's barbecue or ranch or whatever so just be careful with those and with those that added on the side or you know so you can control how much you're using but just be aware of those things because i think a lot of the time condiments tend to add up and you don't necessarily always pay attention to them but if you're but if you're you know squirting a bunch of ketchup on your fries and then you have barbecue sauce or ranch and all these extra sauces yeah Yeah. it makes a difference difference. definitely and lots of those sauces are high in sugar and that's Mm -hmm. something to watch for as well because sugar just ends up making you more hungry yeah yeah like when i started working at the restaurant i'm at right now i was eating there almost every single day and i gained 10 pounds (laughs) because i didn't look at the nutrition information and something that i was eating like two or three times a week i finally looked at the nutrition and it was 1200 calories and that didn't include my side yeah and it was because the sauce is cream based there was yeah. deep fried tortilla strips there is cheese it was in a wrap like all these extra things yeah. that added on the calories so now i don't get it with cheese i go light on the sauce or i do sauce on the side I get it without the tortilla strips. I sometimes I get it in a wrap or then you can just add everything on top and make a salad out of it or have it with mm-hmm. rice instead or things like that. You can yeah. use yeah. the same guidelines for swapping ingredients at an actual restaurant as you can in a fast food restaurant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that's another part of another just part having that open conversation, that open with, conversation your server. with your server. What is in this? What is you know, this? they only you give some a little blurb, blurb on the menu of what the meal is or what the dish is. So having that conversation, so what extra sauces do they put? What do they cook, what do they cook it in? What kind of oil do you see at the restaurant? There's all those questions where it's where it's knowledge is power and the information that you can get from your server. That's going to help you out a lot in the long run. Yeah. And a lot of restaurants have that kind of information on their website as well, because now that the world is turning to a more health focused way of living, they want that information to be easy as possible to get. So then you make yeah. the decision to come to their restaurant. So you can go online and look at the menu beforehand. You can probably look at the calorie count ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Just watch for the calorie count. And then if they give you the option to add things like barbecue sauces and things like that, that's not included in the calorie count. So mm-hmm. you have to take that kind of stuff into consideration. Yeah. And I was actually at the mall the other day And I stopped to pick up some food on my way home. And I noticed that one of the fast food burger restaurants, they 
a bun for lettuce at no extra charge. So wow. that's, that's an option everywhere. People do it at my restaurant all the time. If you're getting a burger, instead of getting the bun, ask for a big piece of like romaine lettuce or iceberg lettuce. If you're cooking at home, butter lettuce is the best to use for a lettuce wrap. Mm -hmm. And you can have your burger instead of the bun in the lettuce. Yeah, and that automatically saves you the carbs. It saves you the calories. calories. And if you did want to have, have, have a little side of fries, then fries, you're then already you're making a better decision with, with the bun. So then maybe you have a little bit of extra room for the fries or whatever you want at your side. Definitely. And it's saving you not only the carbs and the calories, but most times in restaurants, they use white bread instead yes. of a whole wheat yes. bread. So you're not getting the refined carbohydrates with all the extra sugar. Yeah. And the additives that are in restaurant foods and convenience foods in general. Yeah. Also, another tip is lots of restaurants will let you substitute what you use for your sandwich. So if you didn't want to do a lettuce wrap and you did want to have some bread or you did want to have some carbs, if they have a sandwich that serves on a rye or a multi-grain bread, they'll be able to use that for your burger as well. So you, it's just yeah. what the restaurant has in stock or what they have on their menu. They can alter another menu item to, to fit what you'd like, what you'd like. Yeah. Take a look through the menu and see what other things come with. And you are more than likely able to add those or swap them for what the dish you're ordering comes with. Yeah. The restaurant that I'm working at, there is a stir fry that is served with noodles, noodles. But we have another oh, stir fry that's served with, with rice. And if you wanted if you the stir fry with noodles, with noodles, but you wanted to sub it in for the multi grain rice or the brown rice, you can absolutely do that. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Definitely. Yeah. 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 So while we're on the topic of meal planning and meal prep, I just want everyone to know that for this webinar, I am offering 65% off my seven day meal plan for busy women, hungry, happy, healthy. So you can go to healthandhappiness.ca slash hungry, happy, healthy, and use the discount code fresh start, all one word, all lowercase, and you will get 65% off that meal plan. So it makes it less than $10, which is less than honestly my drink at Starbucks. And, <laughs> and it's made by myself. I'm a registered holistic nutritionist. And I designed it with busy women in mind because I know we don't have time to come home every night and spend an hour cooking something healthy. So instead, like Melissa was saying, you spend those few hours on the weekend prepping and planning for your week. Mm -hmm. And then all that food is ready to go. And you know you have healthy food waiting for you at home so you can stay on track with your goals. And it just makes it that much easier to do other things like go to your workouts and yeah. take care of yourself and walk instead of taking the elevator. When you know you have a healthy week already planned, mm -hmm. all those other things start falling in place. So that is healthandhappiness.ca slash hungry, happy, healthy. And the code is fresh start, all one word, lowercase for 65% off. Awesome. Yeah. So you like meal planning, right? And meal prepping. Yes, Have do. you heard that a lot of grocery stores are doing online grocery shopping now? I, the Sobeys in my area is doing online grocery shopping and it seems amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. I just started doing it a couple weeks ago because like you said, some people think it's crazy to spend your Sunday afternoon grocery shopping yeah. and then meal yeah. planning. And the first time you do it, it takes a little bit longer. I think it took me about 45 minutes because you have to like type in each thing individually, but it remembers everything you've ordered. So the next time you just go through and like, I want mushrooms again, I want onions again, I want tomatoes again, I need tortillas or whatever it is, you just click on it, it takes 10 minutes each time, you pull up to the grocery store, you call them, they bring your food to your car, and it takes 10 minutes to pick up your yeah. groceries instead of spending an hour or if you're going on the weekend, sometimes an hour and a half if the lines are long to do your grocery shopping because we're all busy people. We don't yeah. have time and spend that time on it every single week and that's when people end up saying oh I don't have time for it this week I'm just going to pick up food at work or pick up McDonald's on the way home or whatever it is or yeah. eat like yeah. some frozen like lean cuisine thing for supper that's actually full of junk and not yeah. healthy yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah, it's a lot of small decisions that all come together to make everything so much easier. So making that decision to have a plan with your meals, making the decision to spend that extra 20 or 30 minutes to go pick up the groceries that you need for the entire week. And then again, making that decision to spend maybe one to two hours. It doesn't even take that long when you're prepping everything all at once. I probably spend on average three to three and a half hours. That's cook time included to prep all my meals usually one meals slow meals cooker meal and, and then the rest is done individually but it doesn't take as long as people, people think so if you if you did a calculation of the time that you would take spending prepping and planning and the time it would take for you to make separate separate meals um throughout the week you're saving yourself time and you're saving yourself money exactly most people spend an hour every night after work making dinner so that's seven mm -hmm. hours in the week just for dinner, and you're only spending three hours one day, and your entire week is prepped for. And you only have to clean up once, which is another bonus. <laughs> that is a bonus, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and clean up while you cook is what yeah. I have found makes a huge difference, because there's nothing worse than spending three hours in the kitchen and then looking at this huge pile of dishes. It's going to take you another half an hour to wash So yeah. Yeah. while you cook. Absolutely. So when I'm making my meal plans, I always like to start with my breakfast for the week because I find that in dinner and lunch, there's so many options that it yeah. can be overwhelming. So I always start with breakfast because I have, you know, like my oatmeal, my yogurt, my smoothie bowls. On the weekends, I'll do bacon and eggs or like an omelet or something. I only yeah. have a few options that I go to. So I always do my breakfast first and then I plan my dinners. And I try to choose ingredients that are similar throughout the week. So I'm not buying a red pepper and only using half of it and then having yeah. that pepper and that money go to waste because we know in the winter ingredients in fresh produce are not cheap and a pepper can be like $4. Yeah. And then I'll yeah. use my leftovers for lunches throughout the week. So do you have any sort of system when you're planning your meals? So I'm in a little bit of a rut with my breakfast, and I've had the same breakfast for the past three months. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see it every day. Pardon? Pardon? If anyone follows you on Instagram, they'll see it every day in your story. Yeah, the same omelet every single day, which to some people might sound crazy, but I've just been loving it. So breakfasts are usually pretty easy. It always consists of eggs for protein. And sometimes I might do like a banana, banana cake with the egg and cinnamon. And a, and a banana, or I usually or go for my omelet, omelet, which is what I've been eating a lot lately. A lot lately. Um, um, every Sunday, I have two meals, so one for lunch and one for supper. It usually differs, but I do have some staples. Again, like you said, like you said, to make sure you're using all the ingredients that you're buying. So I try and just buy small amounts of everything, enough carrots or enough vegetables or fresh produce for the dishes. And another tip that I always do is I try cooking all my meat at once. So if I'm so if I'm having say ground chicken and turkey for my shepherd's pie, but I could also use ground chicken and turkey for some lettuce wraps or a fajita bowl that I'm wanting to make later in the week. I cook it all at once, so then I'm again cleaning up once and then prepping once, and then you can separate the meat and then season it accordingly to however or whatever dish you're making. That's a really great tip because I usually, because I like the different seasoning, so I don't mm -hmm. not eating like Mexican inspired food for five days yeah. a week. Yeah. So yeah. I've always been cooking my chicken breast separately because I want those seasonings, but that's a good idea to just cook them plain and then season them afterwards. Yeah, and I usually always cook with garlic and onion and saute those with the meat, but then afterwards once I separate them, then you add the, whether you're going to do dry or fresh or whatever. Yeah, garlic and onion makes everything better. Absolutely, it does. So I've been following you on your Instagram, which is Make It Count Fitness. It's in the caption for this video. And your YouTube, which is Making Melissa. And I know that you make that shepherd's pie quite often. Yes, do I do. Do you have other go-tos for your meal planning? Um, shepherd's pie is one that I make, that I make I, on rotation I like every other week. Every other week. Um, I really um, like chili. I really like chili. Chili is a really good one in the winter time when you want something warm and hearty. Again, lots of protein. It's great flavor, and you can season it. And if you like spicy, then you can add a little bit more spice to that. Um, another one that I like to do is lettuce wrap. So I make up a fajita veg with some ground meat, and then I just take romaine lettuce leaves. My favorite guacamole, which is the holy guacamole. And there's a lot of sugars in that one, so I like to add that. 
Um, it usually different. I made a butter chicken a few weeks ago, and I've been really liking the butter chicken. Um, so I just make the butter chicken with the butter coconuts, coconuts, milk, and tomato paste. Tomato paste, and then I'll put that over rice or lentils or quinoa or whatever. Yeah, and those are all really great, delicious things that still are healthy. And yeah, they're and they're tasty. Store good. in the fridge. Yeah. If you're not into leftovers, I recommend that you get over that. Yeah. Because it yeah. will change your life when you're able to make something once and eat it for four days. I did that this week. I was had a crazy week. So on Sunday, I made a pot of chicken and rice, and I divided it up into four servings. So mm -hmm. when I came home from work, and I only had a half an hour before I had to go teach my yoga class. I could just pop that in the microwave and have something healthy and delicious in yeah. a really short amount of time. Yeah, I have friends that will see me eating the same thing for lunch or supper every day, and they're like, oh, do you get sick of that? And I said, well, no, I don't necessarily get sick of it, but it's almost more that I appreciate the um, effectiveness of it that I can get over the fact that I might be eating the same thing four days in a row. It's like, well, it works for my lifestyle, and it's something that really helps me stay on track with my goals and not have to spend a bunch of extra time in the week. So it's more, so it's more uh, yes, I prep that it's delicious and that I really enjoy eating. But at the same time, it's like, well, I'm saving a lot of time and a lot of money. So I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So what are your go-to meals when you're eating in a restaurant? My go-to meals. I usually like to identify the chicken dish on the menu because I really like chicken. So usually that comes with like chicken breast with some vegetables and a side of rice. Rice. Um, I like to, I like, I really like mushrooms. So if it's a mushroom type of cream sauce, then I will usually indulge in that uh, because it's something that I really enjoy the flavor of. Another go-to is salmon. So if they do like a cedar plank salmon or if they do a salmon with some vegetables and rice, again, these two are my go-to. There are a few salads that I like at restaurants. But I but don't I always love eating always salads at a restaurant because I think that if I'm at a restaurant, I want to enjoy myself and I want to get something that I can't make myself at home all the time. Exactly. And I honestly feel that a salad in a restaurant is usually a ripoff yeah. because yeah. it's the same price as a full plate of food. But because the fresh vegetables are more expensive than yeah. the deep fried stuff, you're still paying the same price. And personally, I find if I eat a salad, I'm starving in an hour anyways. So and also, if you're making modifications or substitutions to that salad, so say you don't want the deep fried tortillas that are going on top of it, and you want the dressing on the side, and the, say the candied pecans, you don't necessarily like those because they've got a lot of sugars on them, then you're taking those things out of the dish, but you're still getting your same price. So that's another thing for me. I like to save my money and I can't justify if I'm taking things off of the dish, but they're still charging me the same amount. Then it's a little bit more discouraging to have a salad that's sitting in front of you that's not even really the full salad that was yeah, on the menu. Yeah. And if you're taking things off of a plate, ask what you can add to it. Yes, absolutely. To make up for that loss. If you're, yeah. you know, the salad automatically comes with chicken, but you're a vegetarian it's not fair for them to still charge you the extra $5. So see if you can either get a discount or you can get something added to it that you can eat. Like if they have a veggie burger, see if you can substitute for the veggie patty or something like that. Yeah, that's an awesome, that's an awesome tip. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I really like in restaurants is, and it, they're, I'm seeing them pop up a lot more places, is a like a Buddha bowl kind of. So it's like mm -hmm. chicken or tuna. And then rice and vegetables and some lettuce. And those are a great option to go for. Yeah. yeah. Something, fresh, something fresh. That's something to that's focus on. If it looks green, if it looks fresh, if it looks delicious, then that's usually a good thing to go for on the menu. Exactly. And so I wanted to go back to your bio a little bit where you mentioned that you eat 90-10 paleo. Yes. So can you talk about that a little bit more for us? Yeah, sure. So I've had um, a really amazing experience with doing the Whole30, but I know that it's not sustainable over the long term. And so what I found works really effectively for me is I like to think of my week or my day or my month as constantly 90% paleo and 10% other or 10% things that I really want to enjoy. So, so what that kind of looks like in a day would be 
okay, my breakfast okay, is my paleo, my, paleo, my lunch is paleo, and my supper is paleo because I prepped all that stuff all of the week, right? So I like to keep my meal prep and my grocery shopping fairly paleo friendly. And then the other 10% are things that come along if I want to have. I don't know what I'm. I don't know what I could think of, but like a treat at the end of the night. If I wanted to have popcorn with my roommates, or if I wanted to have a few pieces of dark chocolate that I always keep in the freezer, those are things that I can incorporate into my day. But still knowing that, well, my breakfast, my lunch, and my supper, we're completely on track, and I know that those are keeping me fueled and full of energy. I can allow myself that ten percent, and there's zero guilt attached to it, which is amazing. Definitely. I love keeping dark chocolate in the freezer. That's such a great tip. I love it. Dark chocolate when it's frozen is so good. (laughs) Yeah. And of course, paleo is the diet that works best for you. Yeah, And I actually eat quite paleo as well because I do have GI issues and I find that paleo works the best for me. But of course, it just takes some experimenting for everyone to find out the diet that works best for yourself. It definitely took a while. Oh, yeah. I think as long as you're sticking to real food, not mm-hmm. processed food, then you're pretty safe. Yeah. 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 And so sometimes when you eat out in a restaurant, I think that you just have to go for it. Yeah, if absolutely. You have been thinking about those fries and gravy all day, eat the damn fries and gravy. But yeah. the key is to know that you're making like choose that decision it's not just something that you're doing on a whim it's a concrete decision that you've made to have it and enjoy it don't just inhale the fries and gravy or if you decide to have chips one night don't just mindlessly eat them in front of the tv enjoy the experience and then when you're done you get back on track yeah exactly i think it's really important to make intentional decisions when you're eating when you're eating and to attach zero guilt to it, if you genuinely want, like you said, fries and gravy, or for me, cheesecake, if I want a piece of cheesecake and I'm going to a restaurant that I know has a really amazing dessert that has a piece of cheesecake, you make that decision and like you said, you move on. There's nothing wrong with going out to a restaurant and enjoying yourself. If you're out on a date or you're with girlfriends and you want to have a cocktail, have a cocktail, but just know that that decision that you're making is not, like you said, it's not on a whim, it's intentional, it's something you're choosing to do, but you know that that's not part of your bigger plan and that's not part of your goals. So you're going to enjoy it and yeah, I think it's important to enjoy yourself because after all, it's food, it's your body and you know what you put into it is going to affect you and if you want to enjoy a piece of cheesecake, go for it. <laughs> exactly. And what's the point of eating healthy all the time to live to a hundred? Yeah. If yeah. all you do is eat kale and you hated your life. Like yeah. I'd rather die a little bit earlier and know that I ate the cheesecake. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if you're going, if you're like, Oh, I really just want a big piece of cheesecake. Don't just go anywhere. Don't just pick up any cheesecake. Mm-hmm. Go somewhere that you know has the best dang cheesecake. Yeah. Like poutine. Yeah. I love poutine. But I barely ever eat it because there's this one restaurant that I used to work at with Melissa. That's how we yeah. each other. And they had the best poutine there. Absolutely. I never had poutine anywhere else because a lot of restaurants um, use a fake gravy. They don't use actual beef stock in their gravy. So I very rarely eat poutine, even though I love it, because I know most places I'm going to have it and I'm going to be disappointed. Yeah, and that's the worst. When you make an intentional decision to enjoy something, and it doesn't live up to your expectations. And then not necessarily wasted a cheat meal or a treat, but you were intentional about eating something and then you didn't enjoy it, so it wasn't really worth it. Definitely. And one thing, just like a side effect of eating healthy that I found, is that food that I used to eat all the time before I cared about eating well, and... I loved it. And then from going to a clean diet, I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna have that spinach dip because it's so good. And then I have it. And I'm like, it's not as good as I remember. Because yeah. now your yeah. taste buds are new, and they're refreshed, and you appreciate eating real food, and you can taste all the salt, and all the sugar, and all the extra stuff that they start putting into that food. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of a cool experience, because it's like, Oh, well, now I'm not going to crave that spinach dip anymore because I know what it really tastes like. 
and you also experience how it really makes you feel. Because if you yeah. stay away or if you stick to a 90-10 paleo diet or whatever works for you, and then you go back to something that you used to really enjoy or something that you have a craving for and you eat it with intention and you get a bad stomach ache or you get a headache or your, you know, your gut just doesn't feel great, those are consequences of putting something in your body that you genuinely know does not agree with your body. So I think sometimes I'm stubborn and I'm like, well, I want ice cream and I'll go to Dairy Queen and I'll get a blizzard and I eat the blizzard and then I feel sick. I'm like, well, yeah, I know I'm going to feel sick because ice cream doesn't make me feel good, but you eat it almost out of stubbornness because you're like, well, I want the ice cream, but it's a, it's it's, a, it's an experience that as you grow and as you develop that relationship with your, with your body and with food, uh, I don't know. I'm still stuck. <laughs> but that's a great place to come up with those healthy alternatives, like making nice cream instead of having ice cream. Or you can find, like, coconut milk ice cream or something like that. Yeah, but sometimes soda. I know – the, the, so the, so the so delicious cookie dough ice cream is amazing. It's almost better than regular cookie dough ice cream now for me. Interesting. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes there's things where, like, nachos. I love nachos. Yeah. And I make this decision. I'm like, you know, I'm going to feel like shit. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, and like right after I have these nachos and this spicy Caesar, I'm gonna feel awful. Yeah, but I'm gonna do it anyways because yeah. Yeah. you only live once. You know, yeah, exactly. you gotta have that Caesar and those nachos or whatever it is. But I I plan for it. I appreciate it, and then the next day I move on. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's the important part is not letting it turn into a cycle of decisions that you're making over and over again, but making the intentional decision to eat something, eat something, enjoy it, and then get back to get back to your goals. Yeah, and I know so many people think like, oh, you know, on Friday night I ate like a bunch of junk food because I went out with my girlfriends. The whole weekend's ruined. I'm going to start eating healthy on Monday. Or, oh, I didn't stick to my goals and it's February the 4th. That's it. The entire 2017 is ruins. <laughs> like I can never start eating again until January 1st, 2018. Yeah. No, that's yeah. insane. Every decision you make is a new choice for you to either get closer to your goals or get farther from your goals. Yeah. So if you yeah. had a night where it was just like the worst day ever, your boss yelled at you, there was traffic, like your cat got sick and just it feels like the world's against you have that glass of wine and have those potato chips and watch that sappy movie and let yourself just get into it. But the next decision you're going to make is going to move you closer to your goals. Yeah, exactly. It's not wait till Monday. It's not wait till the morning or, you know, if you had a bad lunch, oh, well, my day's ruined. Like, no, mm -hmm. supper can still be healthy. There, yeah. you, it, yeah. One doesn't decide the other one. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, I think that's all for today. Yeah. So you can find Melissa on Instagram at Make It Count Fitness. That's M K I T C O U N T. No, it's not Make It Count Fitness. It's just Make It Count, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, the Instagram is Make It Count Fitness. Oh, it is. Okay, perfect. So yeah. it's M K, not Make. Just the yeah. two letters, M K. Yeah. And on YouTube, she is making Melissa. And how many times do you post a week? I post two videos a week, um, Mondays and Fridays are my days that I upload. Awesome. And they're great videos. There's recipes, there's her fitness phase, there's holistic things, there's workouts, there's all sorts of things there to follow Melissa on her health journey. And you can find me, I'm at facebook.com slash healthandhappinessca or healthandhappiness.ca is my website. And on Instagram, I am Allison Petrovka, A-L-L-Y-S-O-N. P-O-T-R-E-B-K-A. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today, Melissa. I'm so yep. excited that you were able to make the time to be on this webinar. Yeah, no, it was awesome. Thank you for having me. All right, and have a good day, everyone. Thanks for being here. Bye. Bye.